Hello, my name is Dr. Gavin Watson, and I'm an educational developer in open learning and education support at the University of Guelph. You're watching the first in the series of videos that we're calling Five and Three. What does this mean? Over the next three minutes or so, I'm going to give you five strategies or suggestions related to the topic of giving good feedback to students. While future Five and Three videos will change subjects, you'll always get five or so suggestions or strategies within three or so minutes related to teaching and learning in higher education. It's my objective in the next three minutes to get you thinking about what constitutes good feedback. By the end of the next three minutes, you should be able to describe four different qualities and strategies that can be incorporated into the feedback you provide students. Why care? Incorporating these qualities will improve the quality of feedback you provide and ultimately the quality of students' own learning. So let's get started. When I'm talking about giving good feedback, what I'm talking about is the kind of feedback that can improve student learning. Truth is, we get feedback all the time in many different situations. What I'd like you to do is think back to a situation where you received good feedback. I'll give you a moment here to think of something before I carry on. And apologies for the awkward pause. If you've got a situation in mind, now take a moment or two to think of some of the qualities of that feedback. What was it about it that made it so good? Again. I'll give you a moment or two to think about it before I carry on. Now, with those characteristics in mind, let me share with you four important characteristics of feedback for student learning. The best feedback is specific, actionable, timely, and respectful. I'm going to take the balance of our time to explain these in a little more depth. So, good feedback is specific. Rather than providing general comments, give students feedback that will provide them with tools for improvement. As you're evaluating student work, you could ask yourself the following questions. What exactly worked in this assignment? Or what requires improvement? Answer these questions and you'll be on your way to providing specific feedback. Focus feedback on a few specific items. As a student, you might have experienced getting a returned essay covered in red comments. Reflecting on my own experience as an undergrad student, I'd know I feel a little bit of anxiety when I got an assignment returned to me. As an evaluator, you can narrow the scope of your feedback and reduce the amount of it by asking and answering. If this student could only change one thing next time, what change would make the most significant improvement? By limiting the feedback to the highest impact areas of improvement, not only have you focused your feedback on specific items, but you've also saved yourself a significant amount of time commenting on every small error. Good feedback is actionable. Concentrate on future improvements by offering a student concrete suggestions emphasizing what could be done next time, rather than emphasizing what they did wrong this time. Good feedback is timely. The most effective feedback is immediate and frequent. It's specifically tied to the event being evaluated and is given often. This might mean for submitted work, for example, that you ensure that students get back their marked assignment before they have to submit their next one. This way, students can incorporate feedback into future revisions. Finally, good feedback is respectful. Make an effort to look for the good. Now, this doesn't mean giving unnecessarily general feedback simply for the sake of giving positive feedback, but it does mean that as the evaluator, you should be able to communicate at least one concrete thing that a student did well in a particular assignment. Respectful feedback is also non-judgmental of the person doing the work. For example, you can communicate deficits in work by using I statements. So rather than saying, you did not demonstrate the relationship between X and Y, you could turn this into an I statement by saying, I did not understand the relationship between X and Y. There you have it. Four key characteristics of good feedback. Remember that the best feedback is respectful, timely, actionable, and specific. If you can incorporate these characteristics into your next round of marking, not only will you save yourself time, but your students will have a clear idea of how to improve the next time they submit work. If you're interested in further resources related to providing student feedback, you'll find some suggested links for reading here. Thanks for listening and watching. If you found the video useful, give us a thumbs up, and if you have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below.